ever been listening to your favorite podcast and think, hey, I want to start my own? Then you need Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First, everyone's favorite word, free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Bibliophile Hour. I am your host slash cousin, Erica the Bibliophile, and we are here for day 31 of Read a Book, Record a Podcast, where I have successfully recorded a book and read a book, reread a book, and taken notes for every day for the month of January. We are starting out 2021 fabulously. And we are here for the fourth and finale of Ruling Cameron, A Memphis Love Story, The Return of the Connect. Let's get into it. So we are eight years down the line with Rule and Cameron being married. And it is Cameron's birthday. She would be what? She was 25. So plus eight. She's 33 now. Um. And they're having a little small birthday party. And they have two children. Rain, who is now seven. And Royalty, who is five. Their baby girl. And Rain has one present. And Royalty is supposed to have the other one. But she can't find it. So Rain gives his mom a small box. And Rule has to go with Royalty to find the envelope that was inside of her toy chest. And so the small box was a ring, uh, actually three stone, 18 carat gold ring. And in the middle is an eight carat yellow diamond. And what I thought was in like upgrade to the wedding ring is actually just another ring. So he slides it on her right ring finger. And, you know, they're kissing and rain is like, I'm about to get out of here. Can y'all not? And then when Royalty hands her the envelope, it is a travel guide to Santorini, Greece. So they will be going there for a little vacation, you know, so it can be a getaway. And what is this? Oh, they kiss again. (laughs) And then uh, Rain is like, well, y'all stop. That is nasty. And... Rule like to further, I guess, mess with his child, like starts grabbing on Cameron's booty, which is so, ugh. but the one thing that he instilled in Rain is to provide and protect. So Rain is very protective over his mom and sister as much as Rule is, but you know, and he doesn't even like for them to argue because if things get too heated in front of them, Rain is basically ready to fight his dad over Cameron. And it doesn't matter how quickly they will make a rule. Oh, I was going to call him rule. Rain, like, won't talk to his dad for a few weeks, which I guess they think is cute. But it's just like as a child, you need to know your place. Which is so hard to say, but it's just like, I'm not finna fight with my son. But anyway, you know, as she's enjoying her party... Someone named Jeremy is standing at the gate and the look on his face lets her know that his visit isn't social. And so she looks around for her mom because the last time she saw Jeremy, he was coming to tell her that Anthony was moving to a new location because his hideout had been breached and his identity had been made known. And so Jeremy is Anthony's right hand man. And you know, she tries to ignore him. Like, she doesn't even go to greet him. She goes to the bar that Rule has set up for her party and takes a shot. But Jeremy comes over and rests a hand at the small of her back. And she tells him, no, not today. And he tells her, it has to be today, right now. Come take a walk with me. And so they 
like go off to a corner by themselves and he tells her happy birthday and he's smiling and she's like can you just tell me what you have to tell me and he doesn't talk right away he waits till they make it to the end of her driveway and the news that he's here to deliver is Anthony was murdered last night and I don't know I'm with information like that well that doesn't because I was going to say something like can you wait till the day after my birthday why does it have to be on my birthday even though he was murdered the night before because if he was murdered last night why you couldn't call me last night you wait till the day of my birthday and tell me this but it's like when is there a right time to break that news really and so she can't believe it She's like, you know, I just spoke to him. He called me yesterday morning to tell me happy birthday. He was always either a day early or a day late. And I, I don't know, because, you know, that's the black people thing. I just talked to him. But anyway, Jeremy says he doesn't know all the details. All he know is that someone was in his house last night and they left with his blood on their hands. He was on his way over there for a poker game when his next door neighbor called him and she said she thought she heard a gunshot so when Jeremy got there the door was open and he went in and found him at his desk slumped over so Jeremy called the local police and the FBI have been all over it since and so she's like good do they have any leads and he laughs he's like leads baby girl Anthony is a want or was a wanted criminal. He's been on the run for years. The FBI wasn't there for his justice. They were there to close their case on him. They don't give a damn about him being dead. To them, he's one less person they have to search for. They're probably at the most they're gonna do is call you about his will and his belongings. And so this upsets her for some reason. So you mean to tell me my daddy was a murdered? My daddy was murdered and no one's going to do anything about it. It's like, come on now. You talking about a criminal and in the, you know, in the street life. Yeah, we got respect for them people, but they don't. They call themselves being the good guys, the right guys. So if one of them is dead, they're going to look at that as a good thing and them protecting the streets when they ain't doing shit. But anyway, and so she says, you wait. No, Jeremy says, you know, I'm going to try and find out all that I can, but I'm only one man. The stuff that Anthony had gotten into. So Cameron says, fuck it, I'll take care of it. And Jeremy tells her, Whoop, pump your brakes. You are no longer the connect. That part of your life is behind you. I didn't come here to get you riled up. I just wanted you to hear the news from someone you can trust. And she's like, you know, I appreciate you stopping by. You're more than welcome to stay. Tomorrow, I need all the information you have on what Anthony was up to and who he was doing business with. Damn, the connect have returned. Cameron finds herself grieving Anthony more than she thought she would. And Rule tells her, you know, I really wish you'd wait to go to Lima because he's in Peru, Lima, Peru. I want to go with you. You don't need to be in a completely different country going through Anthony's stuff alone. Wait until later tomorrow or Wednesday when I can go with you. He's like pleading at this point, but she's shaking her head the whole time he's talking. This trip has to be taken alone. There's no way that Rule would allow her to do anything to try and find out who murdered Anthony. If he goes, all she's going to be able to do is go through his belongings as she told him that that's what she's going for and return home. But without him, she could meet with Anthony's former connect and anyone else she thought might be able to give her any information. And so she and Mama Brenda are going to plan his funeral, which would happen before, you know, her vacation to Santorini, Greece. And when they got back from Greece, um, Cameron was going to go back to Lima to settle any and all of Anthony's affairs, you know, sell his homes and sort through his belongings. And Rule was all for it until she told him that she planned to go along. And she says, you know, I don't want both of us away from our children since we're leaving for our getaway soon. I'll be fine. And he's like, you know, still, I want to be there with you and for you. 
when Cameron gets to Anthony's home in Peru, Peru, you know, she's just walking through and everything looks like like Anthony would have it. It's a 70s vibe. And when she makes her way into his bedroom, she's met with a surprise. It's a large canvas of her, her mother, and Anthony hanging above his bed. And, you know, that does something to her. And she realizes that it didn't matter how much time had passed, who he dealt with, or the fact that her mother was now married to her biological father. In Anthony's eyes, they were his family. And in Cameron's eyes, he was her daddy. So they open the box from the floor first. And it's money. Nothing but money. Um, she pulls out one stack and it's $5,000 and there's like over a hundred stacks there. So that's half a million. And Cameron says, you know, she's not surprised. Oh no, that's Jeremy. Sorry. Jeremy says he's not surprised. Cause you know, he probably, probably has a box like this in every room. He's been working the entire time he's been on the run. And so you know, he can't take it to a bank because they'll want a credit check, proof of employment, and even his thumbprint. So he's like, you know, I can ship this to you if you want, you know, when you go back home. And she's like, no, you can have it. He's like, no, I'm not taking that money. Um, But she makes her way around his desk saying, you know, I wonder what the password is to get into his safe. And Jeremy tells her, her you know it's your mom's birthday so that makes her tear up again and question you know why couldn't he just act right why couldn't he do right by mama brenda and get out the streets he was selfish and jeremy tells her you know it was better that way her dad her biological father was better for her mom and anthony knew that you know he was about to go on the run he had thoughts of coming back and taking mama Brenda with him but he knows that wasn't the life for her and she didn't deserve that so he was happy with them being happy and so she opens the safe and pulls out papers and there's two small black boxes in there and you know she put the boxes to the side and focus on the paper the first one is a letter a handwritten letter and it says baby girl If you're reading this, I'm dead. I bet I died in some crazy random way. Like after all these years on the run, like the G that I am, I slip and crack my skull on concrete. Life's funny that way. Or I probably got shot by some young young niggas in a different country that don't know who I am. The magnitude of my legacy. The magnitude of what I am to the streets. And can I pull over? Like, does that not matter to y'all and, like, resonate with y'all? Like, when y'all grow up in the streets and y'all are these kingpins, are you really the king if other people don't know who you are? But anyway, let, let's get back to it. The man that gives the young dope boys hope that there is an option besides jail and the grave. Is that who you were, though, Anthony? You were on the run. You were on America's Most Wanted. That's not who you are. You did not give them hope. What you show them is that you're going to have to travel from place to place, hiding out until somebody breaches your spot. You move like five or six times. Either way, I'm dead. (laughs) And I wanted you to be the one to handle my affairs from this point forward. I don't think you'd ask why and question yourself. I think you know exactly why I wanted it to be you. You're a G. You're a Titan. A Titan. Baby girl, you're a goddess. You are powerful. You are more influential in the game than you think. You are the only person besides Jeremy that I can trust with my legacy. And he's so damn attached to me that he won't be thinking clearly. Look out for him. He'll be lost without me for a while. Guide him. First things first. If I died in the hands of man, do not seek revenge. This isn't your life anymore. You are a wife and a mother. If anything happened to you, that would eat rule, reign, and royalty alive. I love you, and I know that you love me, and we have this unspoken bond, but let it go. If you do something um, foolish on the behalf of me, I will haunt your ass if, (laughs) if it all be possible. 
I want you to tell my first wife and children that I'm gone. I will enclose their contact information at the end of this letter. I will also put my lady's number on here so you can call her and let her know if she doesn't already. My will will be after this letter. Briefly, everything I have is left to you and your mother. In my will, I will give great details about all my money, homes, cars, and assets. It's all yours and Brenda's. Do with the houses and material things as you wish. The money is for you and your family. The only person besides you and your mother that I want to have anything that belongs to me is Jeremy. He won't accept the money, but I've written what I want him to have in my will. I love you. Give my love to your mother. Kiss my grandbabies for me. And do not do anything crazy on my behalf, Cameron. I will watch over you always, Anthony. And, you know, she has to put the letter down. It's a lot to take in. And his dying request is for her to stand down. But he should have known she wouldn't listen. When had she ever? So she asked Jeremy for his connects information. And Jeremy hands her a phone out of his pocket and it was his phone. When the neighbors called him and told him what happened, he rushed and grabbed it before the police could. You know, he could have gotten a lot of people in trouble if they had gotten a hold to his phone. And so, you know, she steps out to calm herself down. And, you know, her mind is spinning. What was supposed to be a trip that gave her answers suddenly had left her with more questions. So Cameron has Elle with her when she goes to tell Anthony's first wife that he's dead. But it's no secret that his first wife hated her mom. So, of course, that caused beef between them because she's going to stand up for her mama. And the thing was, Mary, his first wife's name is Mary. She accepted the fact that he cheated. She just didn't want to see or hear about it. So when Anthony left her for Brenda, that made her hate Brenda. But it's like, how do you hate her and not hate the person that you were in a relationship with? He was committed to you. She wasn't. Brenda didn't even know that he was married, you know, until she found out about it. And even then, she left him. Like, I'm not going to be your side chick. You got a wife. Bye. It was his choice to then leave his wife because he loved Brenda so much. But anyway, um, when they make their way to their door, I mean, to uh, Mary's door, you know, she had called Mary before, but it was only to see if she was at home. Like, she didn't even say anything. When Mary answered her house phone, she just hung up and they came over. So when Mary opens the door, she says, what do you want? And Cameron had prepared to take her hands into her, sit her down on the couch and, you know, gently break the news to her. But because Mary on tip, as soon as she opened the door, she just blurts out Anthony's dead. And then all that attitude and all that just is knocked right out of Mary. So she tells them to come in and, you know, ask what happened and... All Cameron can tell her is that she's not sure. So Mary says, well, how did he die? I know it wasn't a natural death. Bastard didn't, de didn't deserve to leave so peacefully. And, you know, Cameron has to calm her down. And Elle has a grip on her, so she tightens that up. Because, you know, at any moment, Cameron going to jump up and just pop off. But she tells her, you know, he was found dead, shot Wait, no, he was found shot to death in his home at his desk. And so then Mary says, you know, who's taking care of the arrangements? I should be taking care of the arrangements. And it's like, how do you figure that you are? Didn't he leave you for somebody else? Why should you be the one? Um, and Cameron tells her, you know, it's me. I am you. You're not even his real daughter. What gives you the right? I'm like, bitch, how about the letter that he left? How about the fact that I was working for him? How about the fact that he didn't love you? Why should you be the one? But she says, you know, he asked me to. You don't even like him. And once again, she calms down and says, you're right. I don't. But I loved him. He was my husband. I, I love him. 
and all of a sudden uh Cameron like softens up as, at that and says you know he asked me to handle everything but if you want to help with the flower arrangements and um picking out the casket I wouldn't I don't know maybe I'm just too vindictive I got too much hate in my heart because ain't no way I wouldn't even told that bitch I would have wrote her a letter to let her know but as far as interacting with her no I would have wrote a letter and sent the copy of that letter saying you know he's asking me to handle everything and let that be that she wouldn't have a help in anything but as she's leaving Mary hugs her and, you know, she's crying and she says, tell your mother, I'm sorry. It wasn't her fault. She didn't know. I was just so mad at him because I loved him so much and he didn't want me. So it's just like how <sighs> I hate when people have revelations because it's just like, OK, yes, people are supposed to grow and learn and whoop de whoop blah de blah de blah But it's just like from the beginning how are you mad at this person who didn't know you, didn't know anything about you, but you letting the person that was committed to you, that was married to you, he almost get a free pass because it's like, yeah, you're angry at him, but you're not as angry at him as you are at the other woman, as if she planned to take your husband away from you. Um, But anyway... When Cameron and Elle are sitting out in the car, Elle asks her, you're not thinking about, you know, you're going to leave this to the police, right? And Cameron says, why would you ask me that? You know I can't lie to you. Can you just not for once? Let the police handle it. I know if Anthony gave you a list of things to do in the event of his demise, one of them was not to go back in the streets and try to figure out what happened. And it's like, damn, Elle, how you just know word for word? But um, Anthony's words come back to her, but she just says, you know, it's something I got to do. Just promise me that you won't say anything to anyone about this, L. Rule would have a heart attack and kill me if he knew that I was looking for who was behind this. If I have to get back in the streets, maybe take over Anthony's business to get people to trust in me and open up. No, you're crazy as hell, Cam. There's no way in hell you're getting back in the game to get some damn information. And you're out your damn mind if you think I'm going to know about this and not say anything to anyone about it. If anything happened to you and I knew but didn't try to stop you, that would destroy me, Cam. No. Well, if you say anything, I'm going to tell Power that you pulled PJ out of his Little League football team because you were too scared that he would get hurt. And that you've been taking him for ice cream when he's supposed to be at practice. And that you make him roll around in the mud before you go home to make it look as to make it look as if he's been in practice. And that you told the coach to let him sit on the bench on game days. And that and before she can go further, Ella's like, Oh, you little don't tell power shit. Well, you don't tell rule shit. And they come to an agreement about just being quiet. And when they make it back to her house, you know, Power and Rule are standing outside talking. And she reminds Elle, you know, remember, don't say anything. I don't agree with this, but fine. Just know if we get caught, I'm giving you I'm giving you up so quick, you think I was Judas. Whatever. I'm not dealing with the two of them being mad at me because you're playing Superwoman. I ain't getting in trouble for you. Later, when Rule and Cam are by themselves... You know, Rule is just looking at her and she says, you know, I'm fine. He says, no, you're not. I hear you crying. I heard you crying last night in the bathroom. Why aren't you letting me in? I am letting you in. No, the fuck you're not. I'm trying to be here for you, but I can't if you don't let me. It's okay to be affected by this. It's okay to hurt and be angry and cry. You don't have to hide that from me. I'm here for shit like this. Let me be here for you. I just, I just don't know what to do with this how I feel. No one has ever died that I was close to before. I don't know what to do with how I feel. Give it to me. Trust me to carry your load. You know what? You know what I'm going to do with it? Give it to me and I'll give it to him. He'll give me his peace and I'll pour it onto you. It's like, yes, sexy Christian thug. <laughs> um, you know, she tells him to sing to her, which is shocking because we all know that rule can't sing and so uh he grabs her face and starts kissing it all over and 
she's like almost falling out his lap to get away from him. And he says, man, don't you fall out this chair. Have Rain come down here fucking with me. I ain't trying to fight with my son. <laughs> um, the funeral wasn't sad. Most of his family members were just happy to see him. You know, he had been on the uh, the run for years. So it was nice to see his face, even if it was in a church. But there was peace in the church. And it was nice and quiet. As they're leaving, um, a woman named Femi, who I forgot to mention, she called back in Peru, who was one of Anthony's connects. You know, she approaches um, them outside of the church by the car and says, you know, let me know when you want to come. And Rule says, come where? And... Cameron makes the introduction saying, you know, she was a friend of Anthony's for from Peru. And he looks over at Femi and says, a friend, huh? And so Femi walks away. And Rua asks, you know, what the fuck are you up to? I'm not up to anything. Don't lie to me. I'm not. You think I don't know who that is? Everyone knows who that is. Femi is a fucking legend. You know what legend says about her? That she lived in Memphis and went to Dallas with a nigga named Tatum for a hit. She had a, a nigga's dick in her mouth when she killed him and robbed him. They snatched millions from him, moved to Peru, and have been rocking the drug world ever since. That was Anthony's connect, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Well, yes, but... So I'm going to ask you again. What the fuck are you up to, Cameron? Nothing. I don't believe you. I'm sorry you feel that way. That's all you have to say? I don't trust your ass right now, Cameron, but I know you're not stupid enough to be doing business with her or trying to get her to help you find out what happened to Anthony. I know you're not that fucking stupid. So I'm going to let this go for now. But if I find out that you're doing business with her or that you're in Peru trying to play law, I'm going to beat your ass. You have a whole family behind you. You're not in the streets anymore. You're a teacher, not the connect, a wife, a mother. Let that shit go. Do you understand me? Yes. Look at me. Yes, what? Yes, daddy. I love you, Cam. If you fuck us up, I'ma fuck you up. And I mean that shit. Rule is uh, smoking with power. And he tells him, you know, I know she's lying. I just can't prove it. You think she's trying to find Anthony's killer or take his place? I don't know. And I don't know which one will piss me off more at this point. And Power says, you know, I know how we can find out, though. How? L, she can't lie to or keep secrets from me. So he calls L down there. And she's like, you know, what's up? And she looks at Hunger and says, what, you hungry, bro? <laughs> and he laughs and he says, no, I want to know what's up to your what's up with your cousin. What my cousin is up to? Yeah, I know she's keeping something from me. What is it? Has she told you anything? Nah. What is there to tell? Nothing. I was just making conversation. Then she turns to power. Has she told you anything? Why would she tell me something? What you done did? Nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. But even if I did, you know I wouldn't tell you. You told me about her being the connect. And it's like, damn, nigga, why are you bringing up old shit? And that was different. She was missing. That don't count. You know she gets into some trouble, and I find out that you knew about it. You're going to get the same punishment that she would get from me, from power, right? So she frowned, and she's like, that's not fair. Why do I have to suffer because of something she may or may not be up to? So power's like, just tell us. Tell us what you know. But she apologizes and says that she can't. So rule nods and stands up, and he leaves. And after he leaves, Power looks at Ellen and says, you're lying. Why are you lying? She made me promise not to say anything. I have to keep my promise. Well, now I'm in a fucked up position because he's worried and I know you know why. Do you think I should tell him? Cam will be so mad at me. We won't get in the middle of it for now. But if things get serious, you have to tell him. And she agrees like, okay, I will. So they're in Greece on their vacation, just having fun, relaxing. And they're out to dinner. And Rule asks her, so how are you? 
And, you know, at first she doesn't answer. But she knows that Rule cares about her. But he's not just a caring husband. He's also a licensed counselor, a doctor of counseling. So after graduating with his PhD, he opened a counseling center right in the very neighborhood that he and Power grew up in. Cam also returned to school and she received her doctorate in African American studies and she was teaching both to an African American history class and a women's study class um, to freshman students at the University of Memphis like she always said she wanted to. And this is weird to me because it was just like right in the middle I feel like they should have been put at the beginning, like when we get the background of it's now eight years later and this is what they're doing. But we just got like they were married and now had two children. But anyway, it's like the point of the conversation is he's checking on her and she opens up a little bit and says, you know, I can't I don't know. Like, every random unknown number that calls me, I expect it to be him. It never is. And they were sitting outside of the restaurant, but Rule flags down a waiter to move them inside into a booth so he can be next to her. Because if she's finally going to open up, he wants to take full advantage of the moment. So when they're inside their booth, he grabs her hand with his and puts them in his lap. And he's caressing her cheek, you know, telling her to finish. I'm so used to him having eyes on me. Like, even now, when I've been legit, he still had someone watching me. And now that I know that he's gone, I guess I feel naked. I feel alone. I know God is watching over me, and I know that you're my protector, and I don't want you to feel slighted. It's just... And Rule tells her he understands. It's like, that's been a part of your life for so long. And that was like a security thing from who she calls her daddy. And, um... Now it's not there anymore. So that, it makes it real that he's dead. So I understand that rule doesn't feel slighted because it's like, yeah, I'm your man. I'm your protector. I'm your husband. And we both believe in God and we know that he's watching. But, you know, you get it. You understand. And she says, Anthony and I had a connection that my real dad and I never had. Anthony was a street king and I was fascinated by that lifestyle. And when he left, I felt like he didn't just leave my mom. I felt like he left me too. And I said that, what, like two, three shows ago when this first started. It's like her dad, when her biological dad, Edward, left, it's like you didn't just leave the relationship with my mom. You also left me too. And you went and created another family. So, okay, she gets married and then he also leaves. But it's like, you leave on the run. So then you're not only leaving her, but you also left me. And I saw the cheating and what your cheating did to my mom. Um, and she says, then when he le- went on the run and reached out to me, I felt like, I felt like this was my chance to show him that I was worthy. And... You know, she took working with him really seriously, but then she had to think... Wanting his validation and approval made her even worse. Like, he left. Why should she have to care about what he thinks about her? And so, Rule asked her what changed because they got closer over the years. And it was right after we got married, right after Rain was born. You know, he showed up on their doorstep like he ain't on the run, asking to see his grandchild. And as he was holding Rain, Cameron noticed a sadness on his face that she had never seen before. Rain was holding Anthony's thumb and he looked at her and smiled. He said that this was his first grandchild. He said that Cameron was what he was most proud of. And now that she had Rain and Mama Brenda had Edward, they didn't have a use for him anymore. And, you know, he didn't know what to do with himself anymore. And Cameron looked into his past, his family, his dad was a cheater, his granddad was a cheater, his great-grandfather wasn't even in the picture. He didn't know how to be faithful because he didn't have that example. And he needed to be needed. He needed to provide and protect. And in that moment, he felt like he couldn't do either anymore because they both had someone else. 
and she re- no the rule reveals that he called him two days before he died and he said he feels like Anthony knew that things were about to go left so he thanked him for being there for Cameron and never letting her down and he also told rule what he wanted to get Cameron for her birthday and he tried to wire him some money but rule said you know no just tell me what you want and I'll get it and he even had one of his guys deliver the money like personally and so Cameron she don't care about all that she's like he got me something for my birthday where is it why didn't you give it to me and he's like I didn't I didn't have time then I wanted to give it to you when everyone left but Jeremy came over and you know it was crazy on her birthday and it hasn't seemed like the right time since then he's been trying to give her time to like process even open up about her feelings and if he thought she couldn't handle it, he wasn't going to give it to her. And he didn't want to set her off again. So when they get home from the restaurant, he gives her the bag and she just stares inside of it. Now he knows what it is because he went to the store and bought it. So he doesn't think like it had any real meaning to it. But the way she's staring at it, he knows that it's something more important. It's a bottle of Chanel number no. five. And she tells him, you know, that was her mother's favorite scent when she was with Anthony. He bought it for her and she wore it every day. So that made Cameron love it. And one day she snuck into their room and put it on. And when Anthony came home that night, he was so upset that she had it on. He said that she was too young to be wearing perfume, especially that perfume. So he made her take it off. So, of course, she was upset and crying and didn't want to talk to him. But he came into her room the next morning and he apologized for yelling at her and hurting her feelings. But he explained that she was his baby girl and he didn't want her growing up too fast. So, and that she needed to wait until she was married with 10 children. Then she'd be a woman. And she'd still be his baby girl, but but, uh, but by then she would be a woman. So, she gets out of the bed and is walking to the bathroom Rule is like, what are you doing? I'm taking a shower. I want to put this on now. They're doing some activity and they're in the water just loving their vacation. And Rule asked her, you know, why did she want to visit this place specifically for so long? She's just been talking about it. And... She mentions a photo album at her mom's house and it's pictures with her and Anthony. And she says, you know, they were taken there in Santorini, Greece. It was the happiest that her mom had ever been. She still hasn't seen her smile that big again. Three days after they came back home from Greece, she found out that he cheated on her and you know, maybe like the trip was his way of apologizing without apologizing. And her mom said that that was the happiest that she had ever been on that vacation. And Cameron just wanted to see for herself. And it's just like, girl, I need you to. Oof. I don't know. It seems like you're almost obsessed, obsessed with her mom and how things went for her. It's like she wants to relive her life. And it's like. If things happen that way, it's like, unfortunately, they happen. But it's like, you're trying to force your mom's life to be your life. And it's just like, girl, no. But Rue tells her, you know, that's not how things are going to end with us, right? Nothing but death will separate us. And I pray that we die together because I can't see myself doing this life shit without you. I will never cheat on you. Nothing, Never do anything to intentionally hurt you. You know that, right? And she says, I know, but I can't tell you how good it feels To have you remind me. So in that moment, he's like, you know, let's do something impulsive, eternal. Let's go get tattoos, like matching tattoos. And he tells her, I'll get your name right under my cross. Because, you know, God is the only being that comes before you. And you can get my name. She grabs his hand and put it under her left breast saying, on my rib, as close to my heart as I can possibly get. Because I'm your rib. I'll protect your heart. But you you reintroduce me to mine. And now it's yours. Cameron waits until Rule is in the shower. To return a phone call to Femi. 
and she's calling to confirm Cameron coming down there and telling her, you know, she'll pull, she'll book her flight in hotel. But Cameron says she's going to be staying at Anthony's place. And so Femi also tells her she's been reaching out to a few people that had ties with Anthony. Um, but she's not sure if Cameron is aware that the men are higher up in the game and don't believe she's talking to outsiders. They are refusing to talk to you just on the strength of you being Anthony's daughter. So if you're taking his place, I can set up a meeting for you. And Cameron says, you know, yeah, that's cool to set the meeting up. As his replacement, as the connect between Lima and the U.S. on Anthony's behalf. And Cameron says, right, you know. But at that point, Rule gets out of the shower and says, you know, who are you talking to? And she drops her phone and she turns around and says, I thought you were in the shower. Who are you talking to? I was talking to Femi. Because she hangs up the phone with Femi and is like, you know, I'll call you back. And he scratches the side of his face and takes a step towards her. And she takes a step back and says, be nice. What are you talking to her for, Cameron? I told you that I had to go back to Lyman to go through Anthony's stuff. But what does that have to do with her? That's what I'm not understanding about this. She just wants to pay for my flight and stuff. She thought I was going to stay at a hotel while I was there, but but why? I'm sure Anthony is the, isn't the first dealer that died under her. Why is she trying to do all this for you? She said Anthony was like her godfather. You wouldn't lie to me, would you? Lie? No. Withhold? Maybe. And, you know, this is what she's thinking. But she says, have, have I ever? You didn't tell me that you were the connect. And it's just like, nigga, you keep bringing that up. And she says, that wasn't a lie. I just didn't tell you. So withholding is cool for you? That's not what I'm saying. You're not really saying shit, Cameron. I know you. You know what? You're not going to Peru unless I'm with you. And she's like, what? No, I have to go. That's fine. You can go, but I'm going with you. So when they get home for Greece, from Greece... You know, she's packing to turn right back around and go to Peru. So Rain comes to talk to her and is like, is it true that you're leaving again? I heard Pops telling Uncle Power that y'all are leaving again. You're not leaving again so soon, are you? Why, you miss having me around? And Rain nods and puts her puts his head on her shoulder. And she said... You know, I have to go back out of town to sort through Grandpa Anthony's things. And Rain says, you know, I miss having him call me once a week. And so she goes down to Rule's man cave and he's smoking and he's about to put it out. But she grabs it and takes the hit. So he's like, damn, what's wrong? Us being gone is weighing on Rain. He said he heard you talking to Power about us leaving so soon. He misses us. And Rule says... He came in when I was on the phone wanting to play the game. I wonder why he didn't say anything to me. Because you and Power install that tough man shit into him and PJ. And that's why. And Rule is like, man, whatever. But it's like, no, that's a real thing. You probably tell him he got to be tough. Can't show no emotions. You know, so it's, why would I talk to you about anything if that's what you're telling me? Um. So... He asks, you know, how do you want to handle it? And she says, what do you think we should do? I don't want him missing us. This is important to me, but nothing or no one is more important than my husband and my children. I know that. I believe you. Why don't you push the trip back for like a week? We'll spend all of our free time with the kids. Maybe he'll help you out in the garden and with your farming now that he misses you. Then you can head to Peru. You know, I want to go with you, but I think it's best if I stay with the kids. I don't want... I don't want the both of us away from them again so soon. So how does that sound? And of course she agrees because that's kind of working out in her favor of him not going with her anyway. So at the airport, before she leaves, she tells him, you know, take care of my babies. Don't I always? You be good. No, you be good. Don't be out there acting a fool, camera. Promise me that you won't do anything crazy while you're out there. And, you know, she has to lie, but she says, I promise. And he says, I love you. I really don't want you to go, not by yourself, but I'm trusting you. Don't make me regret this. And, you know, she once again says, I won't. 
And Trasta said, you know, the service sucks out here. He's like, I don't care about all that. You better call me. And, you know, they're hugging and kissing. And he tells her, you know, you better go before I make you stay. Also, she receives a text from Elle before she takes off. And it says, be safe, Cam. I love rain and royalty dearly, but I'm not trying to be a mother of four kids or have to deal with the rules <laughs> crazy side for the rest of my life. If you die, I'll kill you. And I cracked up because it always makes me think about what's love got to do with it when she's in the ambulance and uh, <laughs> I tell them. <laughs> if you... <laughs> Sorry. It shouldn't even be funny, but it's so funny. He's like, if you die, I kill you. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> Man, Lawrence Fishburne did the shit out of um Lord. Lawrence Fishburne and Angela Bassett did the shit out of that movie. Anyway. And so Cameron says, you know, can you at least tell me you love me while you're threatening while you're threatening me? And she says, I love you. Now rep now refer to my previous message, which cracks me. <laughs> It's like, per my last email, bitch, don't uh have me out here having to deal with rule because you know they both going to cuss me out and I'm not dealing with them by myself because you want to be Rambo. So when she lands and she gets there, Femi sets up a meeting with Anthony's soldiers and there's at least 30 men. So she knows that her dad had a loyal following. And when Femi introduces her, the guys, they clap for her. She gets a standing ovation. And she tells them, you know, thanks for the warm welcome. First, thank you for your service to my father. They say you can judge a man by the company he keeps. I say you can judge a street nigga by his team. And from what I've heard about you all, my father was blessed. In his absence, I'm here to make sure that you are paid for your loyalty. And she takes a breath and continues. The death of a king doesn't mean the dynasty no longer eats. From this point forward, I am in control of Anthony's empire. You now work for me. As we make this transition, I will be working solely with Femi and Tatum as my father did. You will be able to pick up your next supply in three days on Friday. Until then, if any of you need assistance, and she has Jeremy walking around with a duffel bag, and each man look inside, and they grab like a stack that should hold you over until then any questions comments or concerns so one man says i have a concern and he stands up i don't work for no bitch that includes femi i worked for anthony and tatum and before he can even finish he got two bullets in his temple one from cameron and one from femi you will not take my femininity as weakness I'm sure I have bigger balls than some of you in here. As long as you respect me, I will respect you. But if any of you cross the line, there will be no second chances. So after that meeting, the next day she has a meeting with the bosses. And there's only five in attendance and no one will be able to go in with her. So Femi leads her in there and she walks into a room and it's caught off guard because these are literally old men hanging on by a thread. Two are in wheelchairs and one is hooked up to an oxygen mach machine. And the youngest one is still like a salt and pepper head. So they ask, you know, what can we do for you? F Femi gave us a briefing, but we want to hear from you. And her only request is, I want whoever killed Anthony. You do know who you are in the presence of, right? Yeah. We rule this country and your simple request is that you want whoever killed Anthony to join him? Yes, sir. And how do you recommend we go about this? With all due, with all due respect, you don't have to do anything. I just need your permission to handle it. I told that I had to have your permission in your country. That you follow a code that we don't in America. I want your blessing to handle it on my be on his behalf. You and what army? Just me and Fatimi. And they laughed at her, like straight laughed at her. And one of them says, you black women, you have a strength, a toughness, a courage and confidence that no other race has. I had to go to the United States to find my wife. She's black too. 
I'm not surprised that Femi agreed to help you. As a black woman here in Peru, she had to work twice as hard to gain respect, which is such bullshit. But you know, hey, the most disrespected person is a black woman. But it's not that simple, sweetheart. We cannot simply give you per permission to start a war in our city, our country. If you are able to give us proof that Mateo, oh, I forgot to mention that. Um, when she first got there before the meetings, actually, she had a talk with uh, Femi and Femi told her that it's believed that a guy, Mateo, is the one who set up for Anthony to be killed. So back to the meeting. If you are able to give us proof that Mateo was, in fact, the one responsible, we'll take care of it for you. If it makes you feel better, we'll bring him to you and let you pull the trigger. But no moves will be made by us or you until we have that proof that he is responsible. Cameron spends the next 36 hours searching high and low for anything. She stopped once his lawyer called and told her that he could fly to Peru to meet with her and the real uh, realtor. So, you know, sell his houses and stuff. And... You know, they're having the meeting and she's about to go. But he says, I have something for you. Anthony updated his will a week before he was murdered. When he came in, he gave me a box to hold on to. He told me that if anything happened to him within a year to hold on to this and not give it to you until a month after his death. And she's like, you know, what is it? Why does he want me to wait? He's like, man, I don't I just got the box. I don't know. But anyway, there's another handwritten note on top of it. So she takes it out and there's also a tape recorder and an envelope full of pictures. Baby girl, it is my desire that if you're reading this from that you are reading this from your home. It is my desire that you stayed out of wherever I was murdered and that Harold had to mail this to you. Although that is my desire, I know that's not the case. I know that your stubborn, disobedient ass did the did. <laughs> why am I tongue tied did the opposite of what I told you to do I know that you have been trying to figure out what the hell happened to me I'll help you out before you get yourself killed there's a really good chance that Mateo Alvarez had me killed at first our beef was, beef was petty he wanted me to work for him and got mad when I did it he tried to push my boys off of their corner and steal from my men as if that would make me fold that only made me mad I went to the bosses for help and they approved but said that it would have to be t it would have to be Tatum and Femi who made a move, not me. So I waited, and in my waiting, I stumbled upon some information that I knew would change my life. There was a federal investigation going on concerning Mateo. Because of my position, a wanted felon in the U.S., I saw this as my chance to finally regain my freedom. I reached out to the agent that was handling the case against Mateo. He assured me that I would gain immunity during. Mateo's trial and afterwards whatever ch charges that were against me would be dropped in exchange for my testimony and any evidence I could offer if I helped them take Mateo down I would be a free man so I had a sit down with Mateo the conversation is recorded on the tape recorder included in this package the pictures the pictures are pictures I had taken of Mateo receiving a shipment from his Colombian connect Things don't always work out as they seem. Of course, I want to believe that I'll testify against Mateo and regain my freedom and ability to return to Memphis as a free man. But just in case that doesn't happen, I'm writing you this letter. Now, I'm no fool. I didn't meet with the agent in person and I never talked to him from a phone he could trace. So no one knows about this besides me and him. Jeremy didn't even know. As I write this, I have one last desire to get through this war with Mateo when Femi returns. If I can and he lives, I hope to testify against him and regain my freedom. If neither of those happen, remember that I love you. I hope this evidence and letter eases your mind. I will put the agent's information at the bottom of this letter. Go home, Cameron. I will watch over you always. And she is happy and squeals as she puts all the contents from the box in their place and grab her purse and rushes out of his office and she takes it to Femi and says you know we could take this to the bosses and get permission now right and Femi tells her this changes everything I know we finally have proof and it's like can't like were you not in the business sweetheart what's going on and Femi has to tell her no this later basically says that Anthony is a snitch 
The code doesn't apply to snitches. If anything, the code says that snitching is betrayal, punishable by death. The bosses will not help you or give you permission to pursue with this. And this upsets Cameron for some reason. Are you kidding me? I'm about tired of these fucking codes and these old ass bosses. They ask for proof. This? This is proof. And it's like, no. Your father, who was a drug dealer, who did so much dirt and was on the run, was now going to turn. Like, I don't need, like, how can I explain this? It's just like, girl, you was out in the streets. You know about the street life. You were fascinated by the fact that your father was a street king. So, you know, there's codes, you know, there's rules. Just because he, your daddy don't change nothing about that. And if they found out he was a snitch, RIP your daddy. And Phoebe tells her, I care about you on the strength of Anthony. But when you leave, I'll still be here. This is my life, my money. I cannot put it on the line by being tied to a snitch. From this point forward, I cannot help you or be associated with you. You need to return to Memphis and leave this alone. And Cameron tells her to say less. When she gets out to the car, she gets the agent's number and she calls him, you know, saying that she needs to meet with him. And it's in regard to her stepfather, Anthony. So Cameron is packing up to leave back home and she FaceTimes Rule, but not even 10 minutes into their conversation, her eyes are drooping like she's about to fall asleep. So he tells her to sleep. You know, you look like you're about to pass out, but I want to talk to you. We can talk in the morning and you'll be home in two days. You need to rest. I love you. I love you. But his declaration of love is interrupted by the shattering of glass. What the fuck was that? Cameron jumps up from the bed and runs towards the noise. Oh my God, grenade. What? Get the hell out, Cameron, now. And she rushes back to the bedroom, grabs her bag, and opens the window. I can't, I can't jump out. I'm scared. Now is not the time. Fear is just an emo. The grenade explodes, and Cameron leaps from the second story window onto the ground, scraping her legs, arms, and stomach in the process. So one of Anthony's neighbor makes her way over to her and she can see her lips moving, but her ears are ringing, you know, from the explosion. And she remembers that she was on the phone. So she set, sits up on her knees and feels around for her phone. When she finds it, it's broken into pieces. So, you know, not wanting him to worry, she asks the neighbor if she can use the phone and the neighbor nods and wraps her arms around Cameron, but after taking a few steps, Cameron collapses. And it's not until she feels Rule's hand on her face and hearing his voice that she begins to stir. That's it, baby. Wake up for me. Rule, how did you get here? What day is it? You've been asleep since Wednesday night. It's Thursday night. Jeremy called and got you from a uh, note. He came and got you from Julia's place. He bandaged you up and left you sleep. Said you hadn't had any sleep in almost two days. When did you get here? Just got here. I was looking at flights as soon as I saw you jump out of that window. Took the first one out and got here as soon as I could. How do you feel? Sore, but I'm okay. Good. I want you to tell me the truth. I want you to tell me everything starting from the beginning. I want you to tell me what your intentions were when you came here. Please, don't lie. Just be completely honest with me. Rule, I'm trying hard to remain calm, Cameron. Just tell me the truth. So she tells him everything. And all he does is scratch the side of his nose and stares out the window. Our flight leaves at midnight. You're going home. She nods. Rule, I'm, don't say shit to me right now, Cameron. I'm so mad at you right now. I might do something I, I regret. You lied to my fucking face. You lied to my fucking face. Rule, don't. I'm, he takes a step towards her, then stops and turns around and goes out the room. And she realizes it's best to leave him alone, even though she wants to run after him. She's never seen him this upset and unsure of how he reacts she makes her way back to the bed and cry 
This was not how things were supposed to end. It's like, how did you think they were going to end? Your husband and your uh, stepfather, who was also dead, gave you multiple warnings. You did what you wanted to do. So how did you think this was going to end, Cameron? And Rue doesn't speak to her their entire 20-hour flight. In fact, he switched places with someone else to avoid sitting next to her. That's how you know. That man is pissed. He's in his feelings. And on their drive home, he still doesn't say anything. When they get in the driveway, he asks if she has her keys in her purse. She says, yes. Good. Get in your car and go somewhere. I don't know where. And to be honest, I don't care. You don't value and appreciate your family. So you don't deserve to be in the same house as us. And, you know, she's getting nervous and massaging the back of her neck. Rule, you know that's not true. I do value my family. I love you guys more than anything else in my life. No, you don't. Because if you did, you wouldn't have gone and done the one thing I told your selfish, inconsiderate ass not to do. Baby, no. Rule punched the windshield so hard it cracked. Cameron jumped and clutched her chest pretty sure that she peed on herself a little bit don't do you know how scared i was cameron do you know what it felt like to watch the woman i love with all of my fucking heart jump out of a window to avoid being blown up i didn't know if you made it in time if you cracked your head on the way down i didn't know if there was someone waiting outside to snatch you up and finish you off for 20 hours 20 hours, my mind raced with all kind of crazy scenarios. I didn't know you were safe until my plane landed and I was able to see the text messages and heard the voicemails from Jeremy saying that you that you were okay. Do you know the kind of torture you put me through? What would have happened if you would have died? Did you think about that? Did you think about that while you were out here playing my boss and detective? How would I have survived? Did you think this shit was a game? Did you think that I was just playing when I told you that you were my heart? How did you expect that motherfucker to beat without you? And what about the kids? You just forgot all about them, didn't you? What were they going to do without you? Royalty is five. Who was going to mother her? Who was going to do her hair? Who was going to explain to her the difference between pads and tampons? Who was going to be there the first time she had her crush? Who was Rain going to go to the first time he had his crush? Who was he going to compare his women to? Who was he going to practice protecting to prove his manhood? Did you think about any of that? No, you didn't. All you cared about was you and what you wanted to do. So I don't want to hear shit you have to say. Get your ass in that car and stay the hell away from me and my kids. And he punches the steering wheel as tears begin to fall from his eyes. And she apologizes, but he ignores her and gets out of the car and goes into the house. And, you know, she sits there and she cries until she can't cry anymore and I just don't feel sorry for her. It's like, girl, you were warned. But that's the problem, though. People warned her so many times and they still just let her do whatever she wants. There's no consequences. So now Rule has to put her, put her, put his foot down and all she can do is cry. And so she gets out and goes into the house anyway, very quietly. But she finds room, uh, not room, finds room rain first he's sitting in the den excuse me playing a video game and he smiles when he sees her but she motions for him to be quiet and she puts him into a hug and you know she's kissing all over his face and she tells him you know mama loves you never doubt that i love you and you know the smile falls away from his face because he he knows something ain't right and so she kisses him once again and then tiptoes up to royalty's room. She's sitting in the middle of the floor looking at a book, just looking at the pictures. And she's about to take a step into royalty's room when Rule wraps his hands around her mouth and around her waist and pulls her out of the room and carries her down the stairs. Pops, what's going on? Rain put his controller down and stands up. Finish your game. And he's uh taking a squirming Cameron to the front door. What are you doing with Ma? Finish your game, Rain. Royalty comes flying down the stairs at the sound of Rain asking about their mom. Mommy's home? Where is she? Go back to your room, Royalty. Royal opens the front door and 
grabs Cameron's bag as best he could with her fighting to get out of his arms. He got the door open and tossed Cameron out of it. He waited until he closed the door behind him to speak. Are you crazy? What did I say? Are you trying to make me fuck you up, Cameron? You need to leave now. I will not let you put out, put me out of my homeroom. Rule, Lord have mercy. I don't give a damn how mad you are at me. Be mad, but you're going to be mad in the same house as me. Nah, if you want to stay, you can stay. I'll take the kids and we'll leave. No, don't. Don't take them anywhere, Rule. Then you need to leave. I don't want to see you. I don't want you around them. It's bad enough I have to explain why I had to carry their mother out of their home. Don't come back. And I don't know why like she was taking this shit as a joke. You really want me to leave? Like, girl, he cussed your ass out in the car. He literally physically dragged you out of the house. What's not clear? Yeah, he wants you to leave, sis. And I kind of feel like you need to leave, too. It ain't got to be permanent, but just let the man have a breather. Can I at least say goodbye to Rosie? No. Please, Rule. I don't want to. They need to see that I'm okay. You know how rain gets over me. At least let... Let me let him see that I'm okay. Fine. Say goodbye and that's it. So Rule opens the door and the kids immediately run out and into Cameron's arms. It's okay, guys. Mom is okay. I'm so glad you're back home. And Rain looks back at Rule and he's mugging him until Cameron grabs his chin and pulls his attention back to her. Mama has to go. Mind your father, Rain. Don't give him attitude. I'm okay. Do you hear me, Rain? Yes, ma'am. Good. Watch over your sister while I'm gone. Gone? You just got here. Do you not like staying with us anymore? Is that why you keep leaving? And my heart would have been crushed. Like, can you imagine your baby? But ugh. it's like, what do you say to a child, though? Because it's just like, you can't say it's your mama's fault that I'm kicking her out because she don't want to listen. Um... But no, she says, I love staying here with you. There's no other place I'd rather be. I love you, boo. I love you more than you can ever understand. Then why are you leaving? Cameron looks up at Rule to help, but, you know, he ain't offering none. Like, tell him. Tell him why. I'm going to let you deal with this by yourself. I'm leaving because I made a mistake. And, and Daddy thinks it would be best if I left for a little while. And it's like, that's not fair. Don't put... Okay, yes, it's on him. But it's like, don't do that. Don't make it seem like... Your dad said, I got to go, so I'm leaving. Like, no, it's a reason why you getting put out the house, but okay. Um, and Royalty tells her, it's okay, mommy. When I make mistakes, I just apologize, and daddy gives me candy, and he forgives me. And she tells her, you know, rub his freckles and say you're sorry. It always works for me. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work this time, boo. You never know until you try. And it's like, Rule, Really? Um, so she stands up and she's hesitant, but she walks closer to him. Rule freckles, Rosie reminds her. And Rain says, you know, let's go. But I want to see if it works. I'm sure we'll know in a little bit. It's grown folks time, as Pop would say. But I want to see if it works. I'll get you some ice cream. Okay. And before she leaves, she turns around to her mom and says, freckles. So... She steps up to him and, you know, she's trembling as she puts a hand on his face and he closes his eyes and she says, I'm sorry, baby. You're right. I was selfish. I was so focused on revenge and hate and anger that I lost sight of what was most important. Love, life, family. But you have to know that I love you guys with all of me, Rule. Nothing comes before you. I love you so much. I'm so sorry. I know it might take you some time to let this go, but please forgive me and let me stay. I know you're as mad as you are because you love me, but I can't take you shutting me out. Let me fix this, please. The only reason I'm going to forgive you is because I, because if I don't, this shit will eat at me. I love your ass and I missed you. I missed you too. I'm so sorry. Let me fix it. How? However you need me to. I mean... You know I'm stubborn and hard-headed. You should have known I was up to something. I don't think you should get mad at me for something you should have expected me to do. Really, Cameron? Why do I put up with your crazy ass? Because you love me as much as I love you. 
He's like, man, I can't stand your ass. You irritate, you irritate me t- to my soul sometimes. But I can't live without you. If you would have left, I would have tracked you down by the end of the night. And I wish, kind of, we can get an alternate version. Because I would have liked to read that. You know, her leaving, probably hiding out somewhere. And him having to figure out where she is. Because it's like, you you actually leave. Don't tell Elle. Because her ass always snitching. And just be, like, tucked away somewhere. And make him come find you. Like, man, bring your ass home. But anyway, she says, I love you. I know what you're lying ass. And... You know, the kids hear hear her laughing and Royalty says, yay, I told you it would work, mommy. And he's like, man, whatever. And she says, you know, now you have to give her some candy, daddy. He's like, no, I got something else I want to give her. It's like, nigga, really? These are your children. And so during Bri- Brill is pregnant. I don't think I mentioned that. But yeah, young Brill is pregnant and they're throwing her baby shower and while they're watching her open the gifts, camera phone vibrates and it's Femi. So they go outside so she can answer the phone. And Femi tells her, I can get in a lot of trouble for this, but I handled it. I can't go into details over the phone. Can you meet me? I'll be in Memphis soon, like very soon. And so she says, yeah, just let me know when you get here. And so she turns to rules like, do you think she was talking about Anthony? Do you think she killed Mateo for me? He's like, I can't say, but that's what I'm assuming. Because what else would she be talking about that she handled? And all I know is, you better not get involved. I won't, baby. I promise. I don't trust your lying ass, Cameron. You said it the last time and still did it. I mean it this time. I never, ever, 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 ever will do anything to lose you or my kids, ever. Mm-hmm. We'll see. And that is the end of the lovely Rule and Cameron story. I will definitely be reviewing more books by the lovely Be Love. No sauce. Peace and blessings, my beautiful people.